Good morning. Good morning. A blessed Pentecost to you. On this 50th day after Easter, we remember that the Holy Spirit came to the disciples to lead the church. It's the birthday of the New Testament church. Okay, now today we're celebrating a special day in the church here. It's called Pentecost. And I have something up here that you probably are all familiar with. If there's any other children, feel free to come oh, up. Oh, yeah, if there's any other kids that can come up too, sorry. <laughs> okay, all right, so what are these things? Corn. Corn, you're right. They're not just seeds, they're corn. Is this the kind of corn you plant and get fields of corn? No. No, this is the kind. That's right, the kind of corn that you make into popcorn. And they're hard little seeds, aren't they? Would you want to eat them like this? No, that would be silly. But we know that if we take these little seeds and we put them in a popcorn popper or we put them in a bag like this and we put them in our microwave, what happens? They pop. They pop, that's right. And what kind of noise do you hear before that? Yeah, when the machine starts, you hear it whirring around, and then you hear the pop, pop, pop of the popcorn. And what's making that popcorn pop? Do you know? The heat. The heat, that's right. There's, well, not exactly fire, unless you're doing it outside on a fire. But that heat is what makes the popcorn totally change, doesn't it? It doesn't look like this anymore. Instead, it looks like this, right? Yeah? 
And, oh, can you smell it? Mmm, can you smell it? Yeah, okay. Well, popcorn also smells good and, and attracts people to it that way as well. So, as we think about the people in the Bible and our Pentecost story today, the disciples, maybe they were a little bit like these popcorn. Let's see, i find our story here. Here we go. So it says, the Holy Spirit comes. Thousands of people went to Jerusalem to celebrate a Jewish holiday called Pentecost. They came from many countries and spoke many different languages. Jesus' disciples were staying there, and they were praying together. Oops. Suddenly, a noise filled the room, and it sounded like a strong wind blowing. The Holy Spirit appeared as tongues of fire on each person's head. They started talking in languages they did not know, and the people in Jerusalem heard the noise and came to see what was happening. The crowd was amazed and asked, how are you able to speak our languages? Peter said, the prophets told us this would happen. Then Peter told them about God's plan, how God sent Jesus to save everyone from the bad things we have done. The people asked, what should we do? Peter replied, ask Jesus to forgive you for your sins and be baptized in the name of Jesus. And on that day, 3,000 people believed in Jesus and the disciples baptized all of them. So, these little kernels, they don't look very big here, but when you put them in the bag or you put them in the popper, it can blow the top off the popper sometimes because they expand and, and become so much bigger. And that's like the disciples. They were quiet, they were waiting in a room all by themselves, and then the Holy Spirit came, big wind and the noise and the flames of fire, and that power of the Holy Spirit came into all those disciples. And they went out from that room and they spread the word with all the different languages that God allowed them to speak. And the church grew from just that little group of disciples to 3,000 people in one day. That's like popping a whole lot of popcorn. So we can think about every time you eat popcorn, you can think, wow, that's like the Holy Spirit changing me as a person and making me totally new so that I can share God's word. And just like the popcorn smells good and attracts people, when we act like Christians and act like Jesus wants us to, that attracts other people to us too. And sometimes we get little bags down, you know, down in the bottom of the bowl. Sometimes you get ones like this too, right? That don't pop. We don't want to be like that. We don't want to be like the ones that didn't pop. When the Holy Spirit gets us, we want to make sure that we share that with everybody, right? So, guess what? I have popcorn for all of you. <laughs> and, let's see. Could you help pass these out so everybody gets one? Some of you want to help pass them out? Okay. Yeah, okay. All right. And how about as you leave, you can grab a, a bag of popcorn, okay? Hopefully we have enough for everybody. Okay. All right, let's pray. Let's pray, Lily, and then we can go back to our seats, okay? You pray? Holy Spirit, we thank you for filling us with your power. Help us to be your people and to go out into the world and share the message of Jesus' love and all he's done for us so that more people may be filled with your power and continue to share the word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Are you ready? Now it's our turn, and there's plenty of good songs. So the first one, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee, will be rising for verse 3. We give joy for the Spirit coming. <laughs> joyful, joyful, we adore Thee, God of glory, Lord of Hearts unfold like flowers before thee, praising thee, their Son above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the gloom of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. All thy works with joy surround thee, Lord in heaven reflect thy rays. Stars and angels sing around thee, 
center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, vale and mountain, flowery meadow, flashing sea. Chanting bird and flowing fountain, call us to rejoice in thee. Wellspring of the joy of living, ocean depth of happy rest. Thou our Father, Christ our brother, all who live in love are thine. Teach us how to love each other, lift us to the joy divine. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory. Joyful, joyful, we adore Thee, God of glory, Lord of love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of the word, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our psalm from 143 accents our praise to our Lord. Lord, hear my prayer. Listen to my cry for mercy. In your faithfulness and righteousness, come to my relief. Let the morning bring me word of your unfailing love. For I put my trust in you. Show me the way I should go. For to you I entrust my life. For your name's sake, Lord, preserve my life. In your righteousness, bring me out of trouble. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Lord, hear my prayer. Listen to my cry for mercy. In your faithfulness and righteousness, come to my relief. you. Let us pray. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, you sent upon the disciples the promised gift of the Holy Spirit. 
Look upon your church today and open our hearts to the power of the Holy Spirit. Kindle in us the fire of your love and strengthen our lives for service in your kingdom. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. Special day today. Uh, it's already been special with the uh, Sunday School singing. In the opening here, the, uh, it's the day of we celebrate uh, the festival of Pentecost, the arrival, or the giving, I should say, of the Holy Spirit that Jesus promised his disciples and it would come upon them and all of us. And uh, the prophet Joel, as you will see in the reading today, had prophesied it in the days of old. The epistle reading today is out of Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. It's printed on page 5 of your worship folder. If anybody wants to follow along in an actual Bible, it would be on page 1692. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Well, suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now, they were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. And when they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, Aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Well, then how is it that each of us hears them in our native uh, language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. While amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, well, they have had too much wine. Well, then Peter stood up with the eleven, and he raised his voice, and he addressed the crowd, Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And those words are quoted. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and and signs on the earth below blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. Be to God. We share together the Alleluia verse. Alleluia. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. The Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. In John 14, 23 to 31, Jesus reminds his disciples of the importance of the Holy Spirit in their lives and the lives of all Christians. Jesus replied, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. 
My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. You heard me say, I am going away and I am coming back to you. If you loved me, you would be glad that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. I have told you now before it happens, so that when it does happen you will believe. I will not say much more to you, for the Prince of this world is coming. He has no hold over me, but he comes so that the world may learn that I love the Father and do exactly what my Father has commanded me. Come now, let us leave. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Our creedal statement today from 1 John 4, 13 to 16, the Holy Spirit makes it possible for us to come to faith, to grow in faith, and to witness our faith in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, sent by God our Father. This is how we know that we live in Him and He in us, because He has given us. And His Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in him and he in God. And so we know and rely on the God God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in him. You may be seated. We'll continue with the hymn of the day soon and very soon. Thank you, praise man. It really helps us get into the mood of the song. It's a song of hope. Today we'll be talking about another gift of the Spirit, the gift of peace. So may the love of God our Father, the peace of Christ our Savior, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with us. Amen. Jesus said, peace be with you. He also says in verse 27 of our text, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. You probably notice that at various times the Old Testament peoples ask God, Make your face shine upon us. 
in the blessing from the book of Numbers. We ask that the Lord's face would shine upon us. Today in the psalm, we plead it with the Lord. Do not hide your face from me. So when God's face is shining, it means there's that connection and we feel the sense of God's presence in and around us. The work of the Spirit is filling our lives. So do we see the Lord now and then? Or do we see the Lord now and then? Is there a difference? Warren Chandler was a lawyer. One of the cases he had was a person who was accused of murder. There were extenuating circumstances, so lawyer Chandler found lots of reasons to give some doubt to the jury, and he was acquitted. He was concerned about his client, so he spoke with him. He reminded him of how his life could be very productive if he made good choices, if he avoided some of the acquaintances that he had at the time, urged him to develop a relationship with God and look for the Lord's guidance. In the years to come, Warren Chandler was given a judgeship. He is now Judge Chandler. In the months to come, into his courtroom, there was a case involving the same man that he had gotten acquitted. He was charged with another murder. This time, the jury announced that he was guilty as charged. Judge Chandler said, at your first trial, I was your lawyer. Today, I am your judge. The verdict of the jury makes it mandatory that I sentence you to die. Things had changed. In the now, when he first was acquitted, he could feel the joy of having a new chance. And his lawyer urged him to make use of that chance. But in the then, when he didn't keep the change, when he didn't live a life that would be productive and honorable, the judge had to choose judge guilty. So when we appear before the judgment seat of the Lord, is there fear about that? Or could we actually be confident about that? Now the Lord says, I choose you, I send my spirit. And you react by saying, yes, I believe Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Absolutely, God is with us. We see him face to face through the faith we have. Will we feel that same way then on the great day of the Lord? We can, and that's our hope. And that's why we want God's peace to be maintained in our lives day after day to make the time useful to be God's people. When the Old Testament people of God obeyed God, when they were wholeheartedly committed, things went very well for Joseph, for Moses, for Joshua. But when the people of God started going their own way, making their own rules, following their own gods, pretty soon they were off track and God would say, I need to bring judgment upon you. And often a foreign nation would be that judgment. Sometimes they were taken into exile until they would again say, yes, Lord, we will obey. Yes, Lord, we know you are our God. We must be faithful. With peace comes victory. Romans 5.1 says, Therefore, since we've been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord reminds us, if you remain in me, if you stay attached, I'm the vine, you are the branches, then you can bear much fruit. And those fruit are the things that come out of faith. Love, joy, peace, patience, and so forth. As the Holy Spirit is in our hearts and minds, then we see God now and then as we remain faithful. Do you remember a man named Zacchaeus? Try to think about what you remember of Zacchaeus.
What do you remember? Short guy? He was curious, a tax collector, and those people were not well liked because they extorted more taxes than they were owed. That's how they made their living, but they kind of cheated. Zacchaeus was curious. He climbs the sycamore tree to see Jesus when he comes to Jericho. And what does Jesus say to him? Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your home today. A surprise, but for Zacchaeus, not just a surprise of the day, but a surprise for the lifetime. He spiritually begins to see Jesus and understand that he needs to place his allegiance there. He makes pledges to change his lifestyle, and he does. And he gives back. So for him, the now he is really important. For the Lord came to his home, and he changed. We don't know what happened the rest of the story. We pray that Zacchaeus kept the change, and then, at the end of his life, he would still stand in faith. The Lord invites us to let him into our homes. Most of us have felt that invitation before. But he continues to say, I must come to your house today and the next day. I must be part of your life. If you're like me, sometimes there's days where I don't feel quite ready for him to be there. Days when I might be a little ashamed of him being there. Days when I don't even think about him as much as I should. But he keeps inviting himself because he really wants us to share the joy of now and the joy of then. His whole goal is that we'll be there then at my own passing or when the world ends. It doesn't matter. The preparation is the same. We stand ready in faith. That's the job of the Holy Spirit, to bring us into faith. That's why this day of Pentecost is a great day in the day of the church, the New Testament birthday. The Spirit is at work to open the eyes of our hearts. The Spirit is there when Jesus says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. And we reply with the hymn writer, just as I am, O Lord, I come. I come unto you. Remember Peter, when the rooster crowed, what did it remind him of? I was wrong. I denied the Lord three times. And then when he says, seize Jesus, what does Peter do? He weeps because he knew he was convicted in his heart that he had betrayed his Savior. That's part of the work of the Holy Spirit, to get us to repent, to know that we need change, that we need the Lord in our life in a different way, that we need a new start for this day. Peter says in his epistle, humble yourself under God's mighty hand that he may lift you up. When Jesus came to the disciples on Easter evening, he said, peace be with you. And he breathed on them the Holy Spirit. As the Father sent me, I am sending you. He wants us to have that peace so that we know the victory in our most difficult days. He wants us to have that peace when we're making an adjustment in life to a health issue, to a loss of a loved one. He wants us to know that peace when we're wrestling with a decision. We're looking for ways that God would guide us in our life. We want that peace to help us feel the security of the Lord surrounding us with his presence and sense that God's face is indeed shining upon us. God's mercy is new, how often? Every morning. And Jeremiah says, great is thy faithfulness, O Lord, because he feels that strength and the necessity of that strength every day. His peace transcends our understanding, but that doesn't mean we can't understand some of it. We know the great good news when the angel announced, the Lord has come. He's kept his promise. We know what Jesus was saying when on the cross he says, it is finished. He didn't mean he was defeated, but he completed the plan of salvation as God had wanted. He was faithful to the mission. 
We know what God means when he says our sins are separated from us as far as the east is from the west. How far is that? There's no east pole or west pole. It's eternally. Peace is not earned or deserved. It's a gift. A gift of God for us to use. Carl Lewis was an Olympic runner. And in the Olympics of 1984, he was in four events. The first event was the long jump. Carl Lewis had a tremendous jump, his first turn. And then he sat and passed, sat and passed. Some of the people in the crowds chided him. They wanted him to try to break the Olympic record, but he won gold. And when he was asked about not jumping so often, he said, I wanted to conserve my energy. I knew there's other events and I've been taxed pretty hard in the off season. I wanted to make sure I had energy. He went on to win three more goals. And the last one, he also helped three other people win a gold as he was part of a relay. So he understood where his gifts were and where some of the limits were so he could make the best use of them. Our Lord gives us energy. And of course, there are some limits, but he does want us to use them and find ways to apply them into our lives, reaching out with the gospel, being more sensitive to the needs of other people, helping others benefit from the witness of Jesus in their life, or the offer to pray with them or for them. Peace now and peace then. Remember the beatitude about peace? Blessed are the peacemakers for they will be sons of God, children of God, part of his family, peacemaking. What a tremendous gift. You know, encouragement of others is a spiritual gift. Discouragement is a sin. We have a world where we need lots of encouragement. Encouragement in families, encouragement in the community, encouragement in the world, encouragement in the church, and our Lord gives us the greatest gift of encouragement, the peace that passes understanding, the peace that will stand with us, the peace that's backed up by a Savior who came as the Prince of Peace and gave his life for us and then rose in victory for us and now intercedes for us at the very throne of heaven. Pray that the Lord would allow us to put that peace into action, that we would be faithful as Father, mother, grandparents, sponsor, friend, neighbor, fellow church person. Let that love of Jesus shine in our hearts and lives. That's part of the impetus of the Holy Spirit. That power is there as we engage it and make use of it, as we learn and grow in what the Lord has taught us. Make every effort to do what leads to peace, the scripture says, and to build up one another so that as the family of God, we feel that strength of one another. In Colossians, the scripture says, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body, you were called to peace. Be thankful. The great and awesome God gives us his great and awesome gift. And now may the God of hope Fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. From Romans 15. God's peace be with you. We rise for prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, who together with your Son and the Spirit created the universe and every living thing, we, your creatures, praise you for your mighty works. We thank you for sending your Son accept our gratefulness. We thank you for creating faith by the power of your spirit. Help us to sing your praises. Lord, in your mercy. On this day of Pentecost, we celebrate with joy the birthday of the church. As you poured out your spirit in great measure, continue to pour out that spirit. We thank you for rescuing us through Jesus, giving us the good news to share. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and grace. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who ascended above the heavens and sitting at your right hand poured out on this day as he had promised the Holy Spirit on the chosen disciples. At this the whole earth rejoices with exceeding joy. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and singing. Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread when he'd given thanks he broke it gave it to his disciples and said take eat this is my body given for you this do in remembrance of me in the same way also he took the cup when he'd supped and when he'd given thanks he gave it to them saying drink of it all of you this is the blood of the new covenant shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Now as Jesus taught, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Welcome you to the Lord's table. May this body and this blood which was given and shed for you Strengthen you and keep you faithful to life everlasting. Peace be with you. Amen. O God, the Father, fount and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness did send your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace. We pray that not to forsake your children, but evermore to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may feel that peace of God in us, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his favor upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.